Hello everybody and welcome back to Olive Boy Pens. Today I'm going to be doing another vintage versus modern comparison as I am often wont to do. Today we're going to be looking at the Pelican 400NN and its modern successor, the Pelican M400. These pens are both super popular. Pelican was actually the inventor, or I guess the first patenter, of the piston filling mechanism back in 1929. It's a pretty impressive feat, notwithstanding how the pens actually write. So let's see how these stack up to their legacy. The Pelican 400NN was first released in the 1950s, but was made through the 60s and 70s and found great success. Obviously, it was made for a pretty dang long time. And people really enjoyed it for its large ink capacity and variety of swappable nibs, all of which, which are super nice. Uh, anyone who's used a vintage Pelican will tell you that the nibs are absolutely fabulous. They remain popular in the community today as a reasonably cheap way to get a good vintage flex nib. They're very consistent, they're very good, and they're piston fillers as well, so you don't have to worry about using a latex sack or any of that shenanigans. You have a lot of ink capacity you can go for a long time. The M400 is also, I would say, pretty beloved in the community, though maybe not so much as the 400NN. It comes in a lot of different colors. This particular one is the uh, Stressimon, which was named after a German state secretary who liked to wear like black and silver pinstripe suits, which I thought was an interesting little tidbit. And I think both of these pens have a lot of really interesting things to offer, and I'm excited to show you the differences between them. So, let's get to it. Two birds enter. Both birds leave. Let's take a look at these two Pelican. First off, as always, with the vintage 400NN. This is a rather small pen, or I guess normal size by vintage standards. It's 132 millimeters long, uh, twist cap to reveal a gorgeous pen, frankly. Uh, 123 millimeters long uncapped, pretty light as well. 15 grams empty, 17 full. So that's, for those of you math jocks out there, uh, it's two, gr two grams or two milliliters of ink in there. So it's got a pretty sizable ink capacity. This one is particularly special in that it's got a price sticker on it, which is pretty cool. You've got your nice striated green body that has got some transparency. You just can't really see it in this lighting. This is the piston turning knob here, rounded at the end. There's a little step here. Then the section and the nib. As denoted by the sticker, it is an oblique fine, but it is quite flexible as you will see in the writing sample. Cap threads on. It's only like half a turn to uncap. Then on the cap, you've got Germany, Pelican 400, I don't know why I'm saying it like that, Pelican. Then of course, you have the classic Pelican beaks clip, uh, of course, you know, it looks like the head and beak of a Pelican in a stylized way. And then you've got a nice little dome top with a little there's little mother pelican feeding her babies. It's kind of hard to see. It's very fine. Overall, yeah, it feels pretty nice. It feels pretty similar, I would say, to the modern one. Um, I'll note this one does have a small crack in the cap. Pretty hard to pick up, but it is there. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. I wish the cap didn't come off so easily. I feel I, I don't. I wouldn't trust it in my pocket necessarily. But still a pretty solid feeling pen. Let's check out the M400. So like I said earlier, this is the Stressimon finish, which is the striated black and silver stripes. I think it looks really nice. Uh, you'll note that there's a lot more trim here. Uh, 
so you've got you know some trim rings down here on the piston turning knob this is more of a flat topped pen as well um, the entire cap top is metal compared to this one um, and then you've got your little mother pelican feeding her babies on the top of the cap as well as the pelican beak clip got an additional trim ring on the cap uh, and it says pelican souverain germany underneath the cap this takes about i think feels like one yeah one full turn to uncap maybe three quarters and reveals a uh rhodium plated 14 karat gold nib this is a broad it's fairly broad as you might imagine and it's got that that questionably placed trim ring on the front of the section something that is very often submersed in ink um, and I'll get back to how I feel on that later. This one is a little bit shorter than the uh, than the 400NN. It's uh, 125 millimeters capped and 120 opened. Not hugely smaller, but, you know, it's worth mentioning. Um, and they're about the same size in terms of, like, section girth, so I, I won't mention that. It's, it's fairly normal sized, if not a little small for most people, about 11 millimeters. Uh, this is about the same weight too, but I'll note that it does hold less ink. Uh, it holds about one-ish milliliter, so it goes from 15 to 16 grams empty versus filled. So yeah, keep that in mind. They're fairly similar pens. Um, I I I don't know how I feel about the increase in bling. I you know, being like a human magpie, I do like the shiny, but I don't know. I feel like this is kind of enough trim for me. It's a little basic, but hmm. We'll see. Where I where I definitely don't like is the the section trim. Um because that that just doesn't seem like it's going to last no matter what. All right. Having had a good look at these two, let's get to the very important writing sample. So, we're going to start with the vintage Pelican uh with the oblique fine. So I had never really used an oblique fine before this, um, so you do have to rotate the pen a little bit, but it's not super sensitive. And it does have a decent amount of innate line variation, which is nice. I'm a big fan of this nib. It writes more like a medium, but then an extra fine, so it's, it's fairly, fairly stubby, I would say. Uh, but where this pen really shines is when you put a little bit of pressure on it. So this is a nice, I'd call it semi-flex by, you know, vintage standards nib. got a little bit of feedback but you know that's partially because of the paper partially because it's fairly fine but overall this nib has a lot of character the ink i'm using by the way is pelican edelstein olivine which is a nice one um felt appropriate to use a green pelican ink and a green pelican pen so let's do that little nib drawing i wasn't you know, I never expected to enjoy an oblique fine. I thought it would be kind of hard to use, but once you get used to it, once you got your hand in the right place, it's really, you know, it's not too much to think about. And, you know, the innate line variation is nice. The uh, flex, obviously, also nice. And... Yeah, I, the pen's a little small in the hand. I'll note that, especially, you know, I'm, I haven't written for a huge amount of time with this, but I'd like it to be a little bit thicker. These 400 size pens aren't normally my, my pens of choice. Uh, when it comes to Pelican, I'm more of a 600 guy myself, but I do really like this nib. I think it's absolutely fabulous. Next, let's take a look at the M400. So this is a 14 karat gold broad. 
and broad it is indeed. Very, very thick line. And very round. So very little, if any, innate line variation. Bouncy, but not springy, so you're not getting any line variation from pressing on it, even just a little bit that I am. It's kind of scratchy at some points. I, I don't know. I'm not, like, I, I, I can get down with a round nib, but one that doesn't always put down the line that I want it to just kind of frustrates me. Like, there's some points, like, I don't know, it feels picky with the angle. And, I mean... It doesn't have very much character to it. it. It's pretty blobby and 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 round and not particularly exciting, even though it is a broad nib, and normally I'm a big fan of broad nibs, but one thing I'll note too is the engraving is gorgeous. I think it's really nice. I like those little I can't even really draw it. Oh god. Um yeah, it look it looks nice. It's a good looking pen. Uh, but personally for me, I wouldn't enjoy using this as much as I like the other one because it's broad, but it doesn't even have really the benefits of being broad, which are like expressiveness. It's just bigger, you know, <laughs> it's just like, hello, I'm here. Whereas this, I feel like says a lot more line quality wise than this one. So that's something worth noting. Uh, no, if I wanted, if I was in the perfect world, I would take the nib from this and put it in here and then do a writing sample of that, but the nib housing on this guy is in bad shape, so I don't want to, I don't want to risk that. Um, so that pretty much covers all of the information I can provide you on the pens themselves. Uh, we're going to pass over now to my opinions on these. This was, for me at least, an interesting look at these two pens because for me, I don't know if there's a clear winner. Both of these pens have some clear advantages and disadvantages, but I don't know. At the end of the day, I don't know which one I would want to own. Um, that being said, I, I actually used to own what I would consider the best of both worlds, which was a Pelican M400 white tortoise but it had a vintage 400 nn flex nib which was pretty cool you would think that being a modern pen it is nice and you know durable made out of super good plastic amazing stuff but the couple of like durability issues that come up with the modern m400 are actually kind of worrying they're known to develop cracks in the cap lip which is a real bummer um, and that can lead to, you know, both the cap fully breaking and also just having uh, dry out issues in the cap, which is very annoying. Take it from me. In addition to that, part of the modernization of pens post golden age of fountain pens has involved uh, a process of blinging up the pen to look better, but actually function worse. And the key thing for me about that is the trim ring on the section. These are very well known to corrode across many brands. Like you'll see it on some Mont Blanc cartridge converters. You'll see it on, you'll see it on a lot of stuff. And to me, when I see that, it just, it, it doesn't necessarily communicate a lack of thought. It's more a, a, a choice that has been made to prioritize the pen looking good in the now instead of as an heirloom piece. So while the 400NN is a little bit more basic looking, you're not going to have to worry about a trim ring on the section corroding because you're dipping it into ink. Because you are dipping it into ink. There's no way of getting around that. Though, I guess you could unscrew the nib unit and like syringe fill it. But nobody's doing that, I hope. If you're doing that, comment and explain yourself. Anyway, like I said, if if I had it my way, I would I would have the M400 with the vintage nib because I think the vintage nib is the best part of the old pen, and the 
modern body, I guess, is the best part of the modern pen. So it's kind of a toss up for me because yeah, none of them, none of them are perfect. The, the 400NN is a pretty fragile pen and on a, so is, but so is the M400. It's a, I guess, I guess if you're going to say that they have similar enough durability, then the 400NN has got to win. The nibs are just that much better. Even this oblique find, which is personally not my favorite, I've seen so many, you know, amazing super flex nibs. I even, I had a customer come into the lobby store last Saturday, so coincidentally, like, you know, right before I'm going to film this video, come in with a, like, truly, like, wet noodle flex 400NN, and I was totally blown away. Um, if you are looking for a... I won't call it entry level flex pen because you know you probably spend like two hundred dollars, but a next level vintage flex pen that you can rely on. It's going to hold a lot of ink and it's super solid as a vintage pen, like by vintage pen standards. Go for a Pelican four hundred NN. There are plenty of places to buy them around. I even have heard of a guy who just has like new old stock ones. Again, this pen has ma been made for. A really really long time so there's a lot of them out there similar to the Parker 51. If you like the colors of the Pelican 400 I get it like they're they're good-looking pens. I personally prefer the 600 size uh, Pelicans. Uh, I personally own a M600 Vibrant Orange and I think I just kind of prefer that size even though the nib isn't as good as a vintage one. Um, the vintage ones the vintage nib units will also fit in an M600, so like, why even just skip the skip the the smaller one? The smaller one's just like, it's I get it, it's like harkening back to the vintage size, but it's um, it's a little too small. Like, I can tolerate in a vintage pen because the nib's so good, but on a modern pen, I don't really see the point that much. Go for the M600, you'll like it more. Whew. Yeah, I think that uh, I think that pretty much covers it uh, in terms of. 400NN versus M400. I hope that was informative to you. I hope you got some usable advice out of that, if that's what you were looking for. If not, hope you enjoyed it. I, uh, I had fun making this, as always. And uh, go ahead and subscribe if you would like. Uh, by the time this is posted, I think I will be giving away a fountain pen today. So if you're watching this on whatever day this is getting posted, I'm giving away a Vintage Flex Twin Point Penno Pencil over on my Instagram, at Olive Boy Pens. Go ahead and subscribe here too, just so you get more cool, informative, great content, if I do say so myself. And once again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.